This is, as promised, my review of the new Newsweek Special Edition on Bigfoot. It says, uh, The Science, Sightings, and Search for America's Elusive Legend. The world's top experts discuss new DNA techniques, migration and speech patterns, man or ape, introduction by Survivor Man Les Stroud. There's actually some pretty rare photographs, like this one of Dr. Vaughn Bryant holding a copy of a footprint cast. We also have this one of the alleged Yeti hand and the alleged Yeti scalp. Of course, that's from uh, Nepal, the Pangbotch Monastery, the famous Pangbotch hand, which apparently was stolen in 1991. I'll read you all the uh, introduction by Les Stroud. Searching for Sasquatch. I approached Survivor Man Bigfoot with the attitude of I've seen and heard, I've heard and seen some weird stuff out there and this is a plausible potential answer. And in that process one of the things I've discovered is although our ability to make a hoax is very good these days it's also much easier to prove stuff is fake. To take all of the evidence as a bundle, the thousands of tracks and sightings and sounds, and say, oh no, they're all hoaxes, you'd have to have a conspiracy of thousands of people involved. The odds against this being a hoax begin to become a lot stronger than the odds of its actual existence. And this is the famous Frank White. This is a, a, a photo, a black, a black and white still from uh, the Frank White film. It's an interesting but very inconclusive, may indeed be a hoax. This is Roger Patterson, but they called him Al Hodgson and said that this was a cast uh, from Bluff Creek, California, 1963. No, this is from the Patterson-Gimlin film, 1967. So that's just one of the factual errors that they got wrong in this particular uh, edition. It doesn't take away from the fact that, you know, finally a major publication has decided to undertake a complete issue devoted to the subject. But it does kind of uh, discourage me as far as, you know, why can't they get things right? This particular article, Up Close and Personal, actually quotes uh, some characteristics from Dr. John Bindernagel very good stuff and of course I think Dr. Benedogle is one of our top scientists one of the top guys looking into the subject and into this field of inquiry there's a photograph of a fellow named Charles DeVore um, back in 2005 this is near Jefferson Texas and there's what's in a name all the different names for different creatures around the world there's a photograph of Sir Edmund Hillary with I think this is supposed to be Tenzig Norgay and they're holding the uh, the scalp the supposed Yeti scalp which turned out to be made from the hide of a creature called a Sorrel which is a goat like creature um, native to the Himalayas and then there's sightings from all around the world this is Dr. Shelley Williams with a cast from the Beely Ape unknown species of ape in the Congo. Now this article um, seems to imply that uh, that these creatures have yet to be classified but don't they have remains of billy apes? I, I believe they do. There are remains of billy apes. So I don't know why they would say it's not classified. It's also been documented on video, so why they would say it was undocumented, I don't know. You can see some beautiful photo photography. This is from the Blue Mountains of Australia. This is from China. This article asks, could there possibly be uh, a danger from Sasquatch? Could we be in danger as far as... Um, if we run across one. This little sidebar discusses uh, the hoax from 2012, the young man in Montana who 
died while perpetrating a Bigfoot hoax. Trying to run across the road, he got run over and killed. Now this is a very rare photograph. A lot of these photographs never even seen before, like this one. This is from 1988 um, in in Tibet. These are possible Yeti footprints. There's an excerpt called Ancient Survivor. This is from Dr. Brian Sykes' upcoming book, Bigfoot, Yeti, and the Last Neanderthal. A geneticist's search for modern ape men by Dr. Brian Sykes. This particular uh, six-page excerpt is about Zana, or Zana, the unknown uh, ape woman from Russia, who apparently has roots in Africa, not in Russia, interestingly enough. Uh, anybody who saw the, the Bigfoot Files uh, programs from England, or as they were called in, in America, Bigfoot the New Evidence, we saw that uh, Dr. Sykes had undertaken a study of, I believe it was a tooth, and he tested it, and it turned out to be African. I believe the tooth was from Kvit. The hunt, and this is a photograph of a footprint, as you can see, with a matchbook inside it. That's for scale, for a scale item. It's always a good idea to have a scale item. A lot of people usually use a dollar bill or something similar to that. But this makes an interesting scale item as well. And this article is just kind of a timeline of major events in the Sasquatch field, including the Patterson-Gimlin film. There's Bob and Roger. This is Vince Dore, who took a photograph of an alleged skunk ape in 1997 down near Ochopee, Florida. And here's a photo of Matt Moneymaker from back around 2007. This was in the state of Michigan, along with other individuals who were interested in the hunt obviously map of the US which represents all the major sightings and I believe this is from the BFRO uh, if, yeah this is from the BFRO database the entire map and this is the supposed stone head of a Sasquatch found by an individual named Todd May no relation by the way <laughs> Uh, I believe this was in Utah, yes. Fossil that weighs around 70 pounds. Personally, I think it's just a rock. Here's a little article telling you some of the things you might need out in the forest. Such as a good pair of boots, some ultra cal, a good tent, a nice slip over um, top or pullover, a Coleman can cooler, a nice day pack. Individual named Rant Mullins who carved fake wooden feet claimed that he was partially responsible for the Ape Canyon incident of 1924. He and a group of boys apparently. Article on Cliff Berrickman from Finding Bigfoot, a three page, actually four page article. Great to see Cliff profiled in here at least in his own article. This article is all about what to look for like footprints, hair, broken tree limbs, and scat. And these are copies of the footprint cast found by John, Dr. John Benderdogel in 1988 um, on Vancouver Island, the Strathcona Provincial Park footprint. Picture of Ray Wallace with all the fake footprint casts or the fake footprint molds, I suppose. Well, these are casts made of his molds. A short little two page article on Les Stroud and what he thinks of the hunt for Sasquatch. Actually, this is various individuals giving their thoughts on the, uh, on the subject Dr. Brian Sykes, Cliff Berrickman. Dr. John Bendernagel, Daniel Perez, Doug Heichick, John Kirk, my good friend John Kirk. Glad to see that he got a little bit of a blurb in here. Paul Graves, Ron Moorhead, 
then there's the phenomenon or the pop culture influence that Sasquatch has. This is the Willow Creek China Flat Museum in Willow Creek, California, where there is the Bigfoot uh, exhibit. Star of the screen, Bigfoot and Wild Boy, Harry and the Hendersons. Little Bigfoot, Little Bigfoot 2, the Sasquatch Gang. Willow Creek, Wild Man of the Navidad exists. Of course, Frame 352, or actually Frame 354, the Patterson Gimlin film, as pointed out by Bill Munns. Commercial advertisements featuring Sasquatch from Hyundai to McDonald's, from Kokanee Beer to Skittles, from Jack Lake's Beef Jerky to Honda. Y'all probably seen the recent Honda uh, Pioneer 1000 commercial with a family of Sasquatch and a young Sasquatch telling his family about what he saw. Pretty, pretty funny uh, commercial. Even Former quarterback Tim Tebow, or free agent football player Tim Tebow, did a Sasquatch commercial. Wheat Thins and uh, Five Hour Energy. Uh, Tim Tebow did the commercial for T-Mobile. Here's an individual from the Washington area Sasquatch Society walking around D.C. in a Sasquatch suit. Got Sasquatch souvenirs, you got your Bigfoot air freshener. This is the Finding Bigfoot stuffed Bigfoot with howling sound, some Dr. Squatch soap, a Sasquatch sweater, and Yeti cooler. Also got some bicycle Bigfoot playing cards. I actually have those. Some Gamma Go Yeti Crew socks, a nice mug. Hoaxes, and yep, guess who? Rick Dyer with Hank, the supposedly dead Sasquatch, which turned out to be nothing more than, than a hoax, as we all know, as we all remember. This is the largest freestanding free cuckoo clock in America at the Portland International Airport in Portland, Oregon. A Sasquatch reading poetry. Then you got your wild theories. Where Sasquatch came from? Could it have been a descendant of Cain? Could it come from UFOs? This short little blurb and article kind of asks the question. And that's pretty much it. We have a shot from from the Bluff Creek area. Now we have a picture of Dave Mead, the exhibits director of the Idaho Museum of Natural History when they had the Bigfoot How Do We Know exhibit at Idaho State University in 2006 at Pocatello and we have a footprint a footprint on the back of, on the on the back cover so there were a few factual errors in here but I guess that's to be expected with the blame stream media but I do give this magazine high marks for at least making the attempt to give out the latest information. I think it did a really good job. Some really great full color photos. It's a glossy magazine. You can see that the pretty thick stock for the uh, for the cover. If I were to rank this edition of Newsweek Bigfoot on a scale from 1 to 10, I would give it about mm, a 9.5. It's really really excellent. I really liked it. I'm very happy that at least a major publication has decided to devote an entire issue to this subject. And, you know, if you see this on your newsstand, I, re I highly recommend picking it up. Especially if you're a squatcher. Even if you're not a squatcher, maybe uh, you're curious about the subject. Well, this is a good primer for those who are not knee-deep in this like I am. Or like the rest of us are. So I would say go ahead and pick this one up.